It's time to get back to telling prison stories here on After Prison Show. And just yesterday, I began doing so. I'm going to retell and remaster most all of my prison stories from the past. And I hope that that's something you guys enjoy. Maybe with a new perspective, a little hindsight added on to them. Who knows? But I feel like throughout time, I've got better at sharing in videos. And maybe now, retelling these stories and sharing them with you again... I can make them even better than the original. It would be interesting to know between the original and the new version which one is actually better. So if you feel like taking the time to let me know what you think, please do so down in the comments section. Also, if you enjoy the fact that I'm getting back to sharing prison stories, please leave a like on this video as well. I have really been trying to put my foot in the ass of everything that I've been doing here on After Prison Show, uh, trying to find my way here in 2024. Prison Stories is, after all, what first started catapulting After Prison Show, so maybe it will do so again. Folks, today I want to share a story with you with a new title. I actually had a couple of different title ideas for this particular story. Uh, one of them was, My Prison Pen Pal Almost Got Someone Beat Up. But the title that I decided to go with was, My Prison Pen Pal Got Beat Up in the Parking Lot. Yeah, she did. She got her whole ass whooped out there. And by who? Man, that's pretty crazy to think about. But it was just in my last video that I was sharing about this wild cockamamie idea that I had for a prison hustle that was actually to be carried out after being released from prison, which I never did. Uh, but in that video, I was talking about prison pen pals being a big part of that hustle idea. And I had mentioned my first ever prison pen pal. And folks, that's what this story is all about here today. Now, the crazy damn thing about it is, I don't even know if in the original story that I shared about this girl, did I know her name? Did I remember it? Well, I certainly don't remember it now. And even if I did, I probably wouldn't share it. I think to myself, does she remember me? Does she ever think about me? I mean, no disrespect to my wife, but you got to imagine that type of shit. Do any of them women from the past ever think about you? You know that they do. But I didn't know this particular woman for that long. It only felt like a couple of weeks. Anyways, yeah, I didn't know this chick for very long. She came to me through a great friend of mine who I knew from high school and who was also in prison with me, a dude by the name of Hobbs. Unfortunately, he passed away after he got released. God rest his soul. But this guy was killing it with the pen pals and it would be through one of his pen pals that he would put me on with her friend. Hey, does your girl got a friend? And in this particular case, she most certainly did. I'll never forget the first time that I met this woman. Uh, we'll devise a nickname for her shortly, but it was at visitation. Now, real quick, before we got to this particular visitation, uh, my buddy Hobbs puts me down with this chick. I think I began calling her. There was nothing like making that first phone call to a potential prison pen pal after so long of being in that joint alone. Being able to put your inmate ID in, dial that number, and that joint start to ring it, and there's money on the phone, though. Yeah, man, I ain't give a damn what this chick was about to look like. It was a great feeling. You know, sometimes you can look beyond the physical appearance and not be such a shallow howl. You know, most guys in prison, they are certainly not that, especially, well, you already know where I'm going. Hey! Did you send that? Not all prisoners are like that, so let me go ahead and clarify that. And in fact, nowadays, most prisoners got some mean hustles and cash apps, and they're able to send that for you. Hey, shorty, let me take care of that light bill this month. Could you imagine the clout that would get you with that girl? You paying her light bill from prison? Joe weren't doing nothing like that. I mean, I just didn't have it to be able to do so. But anyways, I got the opportunity to make that first phone call, and what a special time that that was. I'm actually going to scoot up a little bit. I feel like I'm just a little too far. There we go. That that makes it feel just a little more intimate right there. So yeah, I was able to make that first introductory phone call. I was nervous, but we began to get to know each other. I found out that she worked at a Title Max 
place. She was actually the manager there. And I'll never forget this for as long as I live. I had heard about Title Max and, you know, what they stood for and everything like that. And I made a comment like, yeah, don't you guys charge like an astronomical interest rate for people when they take out a, a loan on their vehicle in exchange for the title? And she giggled a little bit and said, yeah, 400%. I thought to myself that that was illegal, but it wasn't important. What was important was the fact that we were beginning to get to know one another. With intimate details being shared, things like... <laughs> I like fish sticks. Literally something she shared with me. <laughs> they, didn't even, they don't even serve fish sticks in prison, for God's sakes. But yeah... From there, time would go on and it would only be a short while later that we would have our first visit. And I'll never forget that. Them calling my name over the intercom, Guerrero, visitation. I hadn't heard that in years. I'm walking down the boulevard going to the VI. I done got my fresh blues on, got my fresh cut. I'm feeling more like a million bucks. And there goes Hobbs right there with me. Hey, man. This was about to be something special right here. Me and my buddy, we go into visitation together. He got his girl. I got a friend of his girl who I've never seen at this point. I might have gotten like one letter by this point and we've had a couple of phone calls, but I ain't got no picture of this girl and I got no idea what I'm walking into. And when I get into that visitation room, I got no idea where I'm going I'm looking around, I'm looking for people sitting at the table by themselves, and all of a sudden, I see her. I mean, man, she was big, and I'm not just talking fat, you know, because I that don't mean nothing. What you weigh, shorty, a hey, way more, play more. If she ain't 240, she ain't my shorty. Three plus or better, or I ain't going to sweat her. You know what I mean? Like, if she ain't got the cankles, <laughs> I don't know what rhymes with cankles. This woman was tall, Amazon-like, big, sitting there in that blue plastic chair with that blue small table between her and the empty chair that I would be sitting in. And God bless it, when she stood up, I damn near had to look up at her. I'm six foe. I'm like, yo, God bless it. Damn, what you? Freaking Caitlin Clark in here mixed with Sasquatch. Uh, man, she was a big girl, you know. But big girls, they fall hard, I guess. <laughs> And she had an enormous head, so I would end up nicknaming her Jughead. Five-gallon water cooler head. Hey, it was all in good fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Hey, Jughead, hey. Hey, what you doing? Hey, anybody ever tell you your head shaped like a five-gallon Gatorade water cooler? <laughs> that shit. Hey, that shit is hot, though. <laughs> yeah, right. Besides the fact that she looked like... Whew, Grizzly Adams, kind of. I'll never forget the dark colored hair on her arms. You ever seen a woman with black hair on their arms? And I mean, it's just full. Yeah, that was uh, that was this chick wearing that that moo moo or that you know that roses dress. But anyways, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to make fun of this woman at all. I know it probably sounds funny. I'm just giving you context clues to describe what I walked into. And I'm going to be honest with you, it was love at first sight. You better bet it was. Joe ain't had a visit in how long? Shit. When I saw her sitting there at that table, and then I looked down at the table, and I seen that bag of quarters. <laughs> yo, we had our first hug. And then I was like, yo, you see them vending machines that are about the same girth as you? And again, she wasn't that fat. She was just big bone like a... Damn, she was big. About the size of a Volkswagen bus out there. Said, yo, they got these vending machines right here. See, I can't get up, but you brought the bag of quarters. Shorty, you trained to go. I knew you worked at the Title Max company, so that already told me right there. She brought the bag of quarters, 400% interest rate, probably some 
Sorry, Saps title exchange right there in that bag. She brought back the big ass burger, A-Z-Z. I've seen those things in gas stations, and man, it's like instant PTSD flashbacks to prison because that's the only place I've ever seen those burgers. They're scrumptious. She brought me back two. I sat there devouring the burgers as she continued to tell me about her fascination with fish sticks, and I began to feel something. I'm not... <laughs> Our first visit would continue on and, you know, throughout that, you're able to take pictures, but you've got to have a picture ticket. And I believe that, well, I didn't have a picture ticket actually, because I wasn't really getting any money at that point. So I certainly didn't have one of those, but I had told her over the phone about Picture Project and the fact that we could take a picture together. I can't remember why, but we never did take a picture. You're probably seeing me looking at my phone. I took a lot of notes on this particular story. There was a lot of shit that I wanted to share. I'm going to actually read you the notes that I took, starting first with the titles. My prison pen pal got beat up in the parking lot. Jug head, five gallon water cooler head. She was a nice girl. I meant to be saying that all throughout this. There were cartoons that I did about this chick that were featured on my blog. I'm going to try to look those up and incorporate a couple of those with this. Visitation with my buddy Hobbs feels like kings. No matter the looks, it was a Ziploc bag full of quarters. Sort of sounds like a country song. She had a zip lock bang. Sorry. Full of corners. And in that must be for those big ass burgers. There we go. Black hair on her arms, no pictures, please. The letters were intellectual. Getting to know each other and sharing intimate details about our lives with things like. I like fish sticks. Hands down, the funniest part of this. Time would continue to go on and, you know, we would visit only a couple of times. Like I said, I only talked to this chick for like three weeks. I'll never forget it was during the summertime as well. It had to be. Because one of those few visits, it had to only be two or three. So one of those visits took place on the 4th of July. I will never forget this visit till the day that I die. Literally, they call my name, I'm out on the rec yard, I'm playing soccer dolo. Nobody wants to play soccer, it's 100 degrees. We usually play soccer in evening rec. Joe's out here after lunch rec, wrecking, kicking that soccer ball around, and then all of a sudden over that intercom, I hear, good air, no! You got to visit, man. I'm sweaty as shit. I go back in there, take the shower real quick, get dressed up, man. I just know it's going to be anybody but this chick because we didn't talk about her coming today. But sure as shit, I get down to the visitation room, you know, hoping that it's my mom, hoping that it's some, like a family member, hoping that it's an, an ex-girlfriend and so as shit, it's Jughead. I walk up into that VI room, and the first thing that I say when I when I finally see her, because I'm looking around hoping, hey, hey, who is? Damn it! Whoa! See, I was hit with a bit of letdown, but at the same time that I felt the letdown, I was shocked, appalled, because when I noticed that it was her, you know, she's holding paper towels up to her, the brown paper towels at that, like up to her face. And I notice the blood. And I walk over and I sit down and man, she looked like she had just gotten her ass whooped out in the parking lot. I'm like, yo, what happened to you? I'm looking around, people are looking at me. I mean, it's almost looking like I whooped this chick's ass up in visitation. I'm waiting for the guards to come over here and give me a domestic violence charge. I'm like, man, this shit look crazy, man. I'm embarrassed. I'm in a cold sweat because, you know, again, I've already been locked up at this point five years or more. I'm dealing with social anxiety. Going into the visitation room, the anxiety factor with that alone. Don't matter who it is coming to see you. You walking past a bunch of people who ain't in prison. You walking back, you walking past a bunch of civilians and that shit hits different when you ain't been around them in so long. 
You feel like a dog at the damn the kennel. Man, that shit, it, it feels weird. So again, I'm sitting there. She's leaking. I mean, not even bleeding a little bit. Bleeding big time. Like whole side of her head split open to the white meat. And I'm like, yo, man, do you need an ambulance? Like, you need medical attention. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm like, yo, what happened to you, though? Who beat you up? Is she in here right now? Did you run into my ex in the parking lot? Like, this is some shit you, like, you hear about, but you don't never really experience. And she tells me that she was walking into the visitation room and she tripped over the curb. And she fell and landed with her face. She caught the ground with her face. And I was, that messed me up right there. I had never in my life experienced anything like this. Never will experience it again. Nobody ever experienced it. You don't go into a prison visitation room and your visitor is in there leaking, looking like they are concussed. And I mean, that's what she was. But she did have that bag of quarters sitting right there. And you know I sent her ass to the vet. You okay? You ain't gonna pass out? Are your legs working? I mean, I know, look, you sure you don't need an ambulance? You don't? Look, can you go get me a big ass burger for the, before they're all gone? Because that was another thing you had to worry about. If you're in the visitation room, just because your people come in there with a bag of quarters, don't mean there's gonna be anything in that vending machine for you. Yo, you a son of a bitch. This girl's having a medical emergency and all you're worried about is getting something out the vending. Damn right. I'm not going to sit here and act like I wasn't. I did ask if she was okay. She said that she was. I wanted to test that theory by seeing if her legs worked underneath of her. They did. She came back with the burger and we continued with our VI. Meanwhile, I'm eating that big ass burger. She's borderline passing out on me. Hey, don't die on me here. I need a soda. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, I just give it to you raw, man. I mean, that's what it was. I'm looking around. They looking at me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got a burger, though. Maybe a fuller belly was helping with the anxiety. Hell, I don't know. Long story short, we would endure that visit. Uh, I didn't want to hug her when she was leaving because I didn't want to get blood all over me. I was really weird about that. I left, and it was when I left that I realized, yo, this just ain't for me. And also by that point, I had sent the letter to my brother with hopes that that fishing line would be cast and we would start reeling in something. The bait was out there, Joe being that bait. And I can't remember if I parted ways with her prior to getting any responses or did I wait. I'm pretty sure that I did part ways with her because... You know, it just wasn't the right fit. That's the easiest way that I can say this. So, you know, the best thing that I could do was I made a phone call to her and I said, listen, you know, this isn't working out. You're a great person. You know, you're beautiful on the inside. And I'd like to introduce you to a buddy of mine. I did a solid in this situation. I introduced her to another guy that I knew on the inside, put him on the phone right there, and it was toodles for old Joe. And from there, she began talking to and going to see this guy. Cannot remember his name to save my life. He was a good dude. Uh, and this is going to bring us to the second title idea that I had for this. My prison pen pal almost got somebody beat up in prison. And it would be this particular guy that I'm talking about. Now, this is crazy because when I first got to my last prison, Indian Creek, this was one of the first people that I met there, this dude. Can't remember his name. Good guy. Uh, but a little off. He was a bigger, stockier dude. Fight game should have been like that. And I'm pretty sure that it was. Uh, we would play soccer a little bit together. I remembered he wasn't too good at soccer. He was a country guy. And him and her hit it off, and it was love at first sight. She was coming to see him and all of that. But I'll never forget this one particular day, because dude didn't get no money neither. None of us did, really. He worked in the kitchen. He had a hustle bringing back things. But he would run up a bill with the store box. It wasn't drugs. It was just soups, two for threes, and... Three for fives. He runs up this debt with the store box because he knows she is going to send that. She done told him that she would. Now, she never sent me any money. And in fact, I was getting the feeling that she probably wasn't going to be about that. She worked at a Title Max company for goodness sake. She knew better, maybe. 
And, you know, some women, they just wouldn't send money. I mean, it was, you know, the way that it is. They, were, they, they weren't going to send money. So maybe he didn't know that she wasn't going to send it. Maybe she told him that she would. I don't know. But I'll never forget, you know, when the mail came this one particular day, they would do mail and then they would do money orders, like receipts for money orders. And people waited on those receipts more than they waited on the damn mail most of the time. And here was this guy waiting on this receipt for this money order. And basically right there with him was the store box man. Maybe he was waiting on a money order himself. Regardless, when they got done calling the names for those receipts, buddy ain't have no receipt. Store box man saw that and was like, yo, you ain't got no receipt, which means you ain't going to be able to go to the store to pay me what you owe me. And I don't remember Storebox dude per se, but whatever the situation was there, whether he was a gang member, probably was, um, I could see the cold sweated fear in this dude or maybe aggravation and anger. I, I can't really place it, but I saw something in him. And he immediately went and jumped on that damn phone and got to arguing with that girl. And I don't remember what happened after that. I'd like to believe that, you know, maybe it was with that argument that that relationship soured and ended. Hey, you said you was going to send that. What happened? I don't need the excuses. Don't tell me you're going to do something. You don't do it, though. It's the type of shit it be. But I also like to believe, like I said, dude worked in the kitchen. You know, he had to wait. Store box man had to wait. Payment was late. So tack on some interest for that. He had to wait till he got that state check in an effort to pay off that store box bill. And almost got beat up in the process because of it. Because of a prison pen pal who didn't send that. Wild ass shit, man. Never will forget that situation for as long as I live. And it was pretty cool being able to share it with you again. Here in 2024, I shared that story years ago, at least five years ago. One of the craziest prison pen pals or something like that, that I ever dealt with. I hope this was a video you guys enjoyed. If it was, please leave a like and a comment on this video, letting me know exactly what you thought about this. I'm going to be sharing prison stories with you guys more often than not moving forward. And again, maybe even doing a bit of a 20-day prison story marathon. But as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world, never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace!